you happen to end up at a dinner with Natalie McLean, let her order the wine. She's a wine writer, a wine judge, winner of the World's Best Drink Writer Award, and this modern-day Dionysus is here to answer any questions you might have about wine. In a couple of minutes, we'll be opening the phone lines to do just that at 750-1211. But first, yes. we're going to start with the wines you've brought, Natalie, because sure. tons of people ask you questions about what to drink in the summer. Right, right. Well, there's all sorts of choices when it comes to summer wines because it depends on your mood, even the, the temperature outside. If it's a really hot day, you probably want something really refreshing like um, a German Riesling or there's lots of great Rieslings from Canada, the Niagara region as well, because they're very zippy, very refreshing. Um, they're going to wake up your palate. Um, but equally, you might be doing something on the barbecue, mm -hmm. something full-blooded, something <laughs> that goes with meat, something very tribal. Um, but you also don't want something so alcoholic you're going to end up arguing with a lawn troll. So you probably want to go with something like a California Zinfandel. They're excellent wines. They're really full of berries and fruit. Um, they're delicious, yet they're not too alcoholic. And you can always find the, um, the amount of alcohol on the label. So you'll notice there's quite a difference. This is quite small print on this label. Yeah, we'll get you to kind of sure. help, help the viewers with that. <laughs> sure. I can't even see it. Okay, yeah. It's, um, there's about 14% alcohol in this, so it's quite full body. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you look at the German Riesling, you've only got about... Um, here we go. <laughs> Seven or eight percent uh, alcohol. We haven't had any wine. <laughs> no. We're having difficult enough, Where enough are we? time holding this steady. Yeah, there we exactly. go. Exactly. So you want to take that into consideration in the summer. Just how full bodied is the wine? Um, and, and looking at the alcohol level will tell you that. Okay, so. that's, that's very good to know. And so the most common question you are often asked is what goes with what? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in the world of food and wine matching these days, it, it, it's good that um, a lot of the rules are being broken um, so that we are doing a lot of fusion cooking. We're combining a lot of uh, non-traditional spices mm -hmm. and sauces. So equally, uh, we're able to mix and match different wines with different dishes. So you might not have thought about um, a full-bodied red with... Uh, a chicken dish before, but if you've got lots of, uh, like it's rubbed in spices and that sort mm -hmm. of thing, then sure, they go together really well. Great. So there but, are, the, yeah. the rules are kind of being thrown out the window, and we're wanting exactly. to remind you that if you have a question for Natalie, 750-1211 is the number to call. We're going to get to that in just a moment. If you're bored with your Bordeaux, if you're looking for a Shiraz with a bit more pizzazz, that's the number to call. We're going to be back after the Valley Notes and the commercial break. Thanks, Natalie. Surely, yes. <laughs> wine expert Natalie McLean and she's going to answer your questions. The number to call is 750-1211. The lines are all full but when one caller is finished another line becomes available. That's your cue to call. We ask you to be brief but before we get to the calls we were trying to steady bottles for the camera and we lost a little bit of what you were saying sure. about these two wines as okay. a comparison. Okay. Uh, one of the clues that you can look for on the label is how much alcohol does it have by volume. So how much as a percentage of this bottle um, is the alcoholic content. And that's going to tell you how full-bodied it is. So these are two very different wines. So you have this German Riesling, which, as I said, is, is great on a hot summer day because it's light, it's refreshing, and it's also relatively low in alcohol. It's 8%. just 8%. This, on the other hand, the Fetzer uh, Zinfandel from California is almost double. It's about 14.5% alcohol. So it's going to be more full body, perhaps go with those meats on the grill mm -hmm. or whatever you're happening to eat that's uh, more fully flavored. And we've just answered uh, one of our viewers' questions already because uh, he wanted to know where the Fetzer was from. The Fetzer uh, is, in fact, from California. Now, yes. we're going to get to the first call if okay, you're up great. for that. Yes, absolutely. We have Deborah on the line. Hi there, Deborah. Hello. Hi, your Hi, question Deborah. for Natalie. Um, yes, uh, I have allergies to um, chemical sulfites that are in wines. But the natural sulfites are okay. Could you recommend a summer wine that I could use that would not give me a reaction? Sure, Deborah. Uh, that's a great question. A lot of people do suffer from that as well. Um, Bontira is a California wine that is organic, and they do try to uh, minimize the amount of sulfites in the wine. So if you look uh, for uh, generally for organic wines, and there are more and more, they're not filling the shelves, but there are a, a decent selection out there. But I particularly like Bontira because it's a delicious wine, it's, it's well made, 
um, and it's widely available in our LCBO stores. And you would know the answer to this. I've heard people say that French wines have fewer sulfites. Is that true? Um, not necessarily. It, it could. It, it depends on the winemaking process. Mm -hmm. um, sulfites are something that is added to the wine. As Deborah mentioned, they're naturally existing in the wine already, um, but they're added to the wine to stabilize it so that bacteria, naturally occurring bacteria in the wine, doesn't start to get active in the bottle and do all sorts of nasty things. Mm -hmm. So it is um, a stabilizer and Generally, for most of uh, most people, they're not a problem, but those who are particularly sensitive or have allergies should look for our organic wines. Okay, well, thanks for that question, okay. Deborah. I'm sure it applies to a lot of people. We have Jean-Claude on the line. Hi there. Your question for Natalie, Jean-Claude. Hi, uh, Natalie. I just wanted to tell you, first of all, that I really enjoy your website. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, very well done. I have a question. Uh, is it necessary to let an everyday wine breathe uh, before you drink it? Wow. And secondly, is it uh, advisable to pump the air out of a wine bottle when you recork it if you're going to drink it over two or three days? Ooh, this is a serious oh, wine drinker here. <laughs> That's great. So, sommelier in training, perhaps? Yes, okay. absolutely. Two excellent questions. So the first one, should you let it breathe or decant the wine? Um, that depends what kind of wine it is. So if it's a very full-bodied wine, um, it could be a bit tannic, meaning it's a bit furry on the mouth, and you want to smooth it out, then give it some air. Um, so you want to let it breathe maybe for an hour or two, that sort of thing. Um, but for zippy Rieslings or uh, young, refreshing whites, generally they don't need to breathe. Um, but it all depends on the style that you like. So if you like your, your wine nice and round and smooth, a lot of the wines on the market today, especially the big full-bodied reds, will benefit from a bit of breathing time. They'll round out and they'll smooth out. How long's a bit? A bit, sorry. An <laughs> hour or two okay. <laughs> at the most, I would think. Now, if you've got a really young Bordeaux that's, that's not at its prime yet and you want to drink it because you just can't wait and... I know that feeling, <laughs> then you might, you might want to let it breathe for longer, like five to six hours, if it's really tight, meaning it feels really furry in the mouth. You there can take you a little sip. Great answers, Anna. This was a 